Wow. <laughs> Eating me. Sorry, what? Sorry, sorry, what? You taste like fucking Nirvana. Like, I am not doing mental gymnastics for this man. I just won't do it. I won't. Welcome or welcome back to my vlog channel. Today I am bringing a pretty exciting reading vlog. I thought why not combine two of Book Talk, BookTube, Bookstagram's most controversial yet popular reads and read them so you don't have to. Both of these books are rated 18 plus. This video is intended for adults, okay? No children allowed in this side of the woods, specifically these ones. I have had both Credence by Penelope Douglas and Haunting Adeline by H.D. Carlton on my TBR for a good six months now, and I figured, why not? The first book we're going to be reading in today's reading vlog is Credence by Penelope Douglas. If you're unfamiliar, this is a taboo, borderline reverse harem romance, but I believe at the end she does end up with just one of the guys. It follows a girl named Tiernan who ends up moving in with her very, very, very distant step-uncle Jake and his two sons. And I'm pretty sure she gets frisky with all three of them. I have read other books by Penelope Douglas and they are kind of a hit or miss author for me. Punk 57 is one of my five star reads, but then I didn't really love Corrupt or Bully as much. So this could go either way, but I'm honestly kind of excited. I feel like there's something super addicting about Penelope Douglas's writing style that even if you don't really like love the story, it's super entertaining to get through, if that makes sense. And then we're gonna follow it up with Haunting Adeline by H.G. Carlton. This is, Book Talk's favorite dark romance. It follows Zayde Meadows, who is a stalker who stumbles upon a girl named Adeline at a author event of hers. She is a writer and he instantly becomes obsessed with her and begins stalking her. And I've heard it's very dark, very twisted. There will be spoilers for both of these books. I'm not going to hold back on any of my thoughts, opinions, or plot points. So yeah, do not watch this if you do not want to be spoiled for certain plot points. Cool? Cool. Without further ado, let's go back a few weeks ago before I got my braces on to when I started reading Credence and let's get into the reading vlogs. Happy Tuesday. Yes, I'm wearing the exact same sweatshirt I was wearing yesterday. Sue me. I've decided to read Credence by Penelope Douglas. Tiernan D. Haas doesn't care about anything anymore. The only child of a film producer and his starlet wife, she's grown up with wealth and privilege, but not love or guidance. Shipped off to boarding schools from an early age, it was still impossible to escape her loneliness and carve out a life of her own. Oh, I didn't know her parents were like famous. <gasps> Tea. But I love Penelope Douglas's writing, and I feel like if anyone can get me to want to fuck my very distant non-blood relative, it would probably be Penelope Douglas. So I guess we'll just see how it goes. I've only really like dipped my feet into taboo romance. I always think it sounds fun in theory, and then when I'm reading it, I'm like, ah! this is for me, but I'm just gonna dive in. I'm just gonna let Penelope Douglas take me on this journey. And I'm gonna read you guys with me. So I'm gonna go out on the balcony and get some reading done and I'll let you know how it goes. Wish me luck. Only on chapter two, but I already have things I want to talk about. We learn that Tiernan is the child of two Hollywood famous people. One's a, her dad's a film producer. Her mom was like a Hollywood actress, and she was very neglected as a child. You can tell like it was her parents really weren't fit to be parents, and they kind of only cared about each other. And she was just kind of raised by nannies. Literally, chapter one at the beginning of the book, you find out that her parents have died. They said, we're out of here. And they basically just left Tiernan to fend for herself. Then she gets a call from Jake, who is her father's stepbrother. And they like never gone along, haven't been in each other's lives for many, many, many years. And she's never even met him. But he's basically like, I know you're gonna be 18 in a few months, so it's up to you. Like, if you wanna come and stay with us, like you can, but we live in the middle of buttfuck nowhere, Alaska. And I know you're from like, California, it's probably not what you're used to. So if you want to just emancipate, like no biggie, just let me know, like, you know? And she's, Tiernan's like, you know what? Like, 
honestly, I feel like I could use a change of scenery. And so she decides that she is going to Alaska. And so she just got to Alaska. Jake is currently like giving her the tour. And I do like that. I really have been enjoying my small town romances. So like I'm in the mood for the setting. It was all going so well until <laughs> Tiernan thinks to herself, it smells like Home Depot in here with a tinge of burnt bacon. Ew, no thanks. The way that that single-handedly just took me completely out of the vibe. I was like, no, mm -mm, I would, no. I even overlooked the dead deer hanging at the top of the stairs. I was like, you know what, it's fine. They, they have to, they, they catch their own food. I'm, I'm, we got it, they're hunting, it's fine. Um, I overlooked that, but I, there, if there's one thing I cannot fucking do, it is Home Depot smell and just Home Depot in general. I fucking hate Home Depot. So that really just, ugh. and bacon, like, ugh, bleh. okay. So instead I'm gonna pretend that this little cabin ranch farm smells like a Bath and Body Works mahogany teakwood candle and keep it pushing because Penelope Douglas, why would you ruin my vibe like that? <laughs> but honestly, so far I'm like fully invested and I'm in the vibe. And I really hope it's like a slow burn because I feel like that's the only way I feel like I'll be able to root for these romances because there is an age gap. She, like she's freshly going to be 18. Like that is just, mm -mm. I can do an age gap if it's like someone's like tw in their early 20s and the other one's in their like 30s. Like that I feel like I can do. But when they're teenagers, if any age has the word teen in it, it just, Mm, don't like it. I usually just don't like it. For me, an age gap isn't weird unless the author makes it weird, you know? Like if if we're in the male's perspective and they're like, oh, like she's so lit. Like if we have the daddy king or anything, you know, like, no, I'm like, no. You know, like don't make it weird. It doesn't need to be weird. You never know. Penelope Douglas likes to get a little weird sometimes. And I like that about them. I, I do. I'm just a little scared. <laughs> Noah and Caleb are blood related, right? Cause it's, I don't know. I need to keep reading. I have an update. So I am now on page 93 and we have just met Caleb for the first time. So now we have met all three of the men, Jake, the dad, and then Noah and Caleb, the two sons. Uh, Noah is definitely like your sunshine kind of golden retriever character. Jake is giving like the dad energy. And then Noah, the first scene we got of Noah, I was like into it at first. I was like, okay, he comes in, he's like carrying a deer that he just went out and killed. And it's like, there's like blood everywhere. Cause he's like, has to put the deer on the table, you know, hunting stuff. I don't know. But it's like, it's talking about how he has this dark hair. He's got like green eyes and he's like covered in blood. And I'm like, wait, this is kind of hot. But then in like 10 seconds, he sees that Tiernan is in the room, just a random woman that he's never met before. And he just starts sexually assaulting her, like on page, like fully. And she's just like begging him to stop until Noah finally comes in and he finally stops. Ew. Like I, I'm not, I just not, mm. <laughs> you can't do that. She's not a townie. That's dad's brother's daughter. Remember the stepbrother that he hates. This is his kid. She's family. You can't fuck her. She's staying with us for a while. And then Tiernan's like, this isn't funny. What the hell is the matter with you? And then Noah goes, cut him some slack. He's always starving when he comes back from being in the woods this long. Then eat, Tiernan says. That's what he was doing. Noah shoots back. Eating. Eating me. Sorry, what? Sorry, sorry, what? Now, I've never been hunting before, but I'm pretty sure when you go hunting, it doesn't like deprave you so much that the second you come back from your hunting trip, you need to sexually assault a woman. I don't know. It sucks because honestly, like I'm not the biggest fan romantically of Jake or Noah. Like as we were reading, I was waiting for Caleb. And I feel like because he's like the mysterious one, he's the one you don't know too much about. Like I was like, okay, he's probably going to be the one that I like the most. And then this happened. I don't think I ship Tiernan with any of these men. So I... <laughs> I'm gonna keep reading, gonna go eat some lunch. I'm gonna keep reading, I'll let you know how it goes, but I am scared, I'm scared. I'm all for dark romance and stuff, but like sexual assault on page, mm -mm. 
I don't know. I don't know. Okay, hello, my loves. Happy Friday. Today is actually Josh's birthday. So it is like 9 p.m. We're winding down for the night. We're gonna have some drinks. We're getting a little lit, but before we do and I forget, I wanted to update the vlog because I got a lot of reading done today. I am now on page 262. We're like 60% of the way through the book at this point. And pff, wow. <laughs> A lot has happened. We just barely had our first ever actual full on scene. Tiernan um, popped her cherry, I guess is what we'll call it. Um, and so that was, that was something. I honestly wasn't expecting it. I feel like as a 50% in, I really kind of thought that the romance would be more further along. I feel like we're focused a lot on the sexual attraction and like the spice and not really the like emotional growth and the connection. Like right now, I feel like there's only a romance between Tiernan and the guy that she just did the deed with. As for the other two, I feel like it's just kind of friendship vibes. I don't know. But there was kind of like a steamy like threesome scene that I honest, it got cut short. And I was like honestly kind of bummed about that, which probably I shouldn't be. I sh probably shouldn't say that, but I kind of was. I'm not even gonna lie. Here's the thing, I keep forgetting that Caleb and Noah are related. So that is weird. That is fucking weird. Why are we doing that? Like, do we need to do that? Why did anyone have to actually be related? Oh. In my head, no one in this book is related. And so I'm liking it because you know what I will say, Penelope Douglas writes good smut. And now that everyone's like getting along and we're like this happy family, now I think is when we are going to just be diving headfirst into a lot of questionable things. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go. I'll let you know if I do any more reading this weekend or what, maybe we'll finish it, maybe we won't. Who knows? I'll keep you updated. Good night, love ya. I have finished Credence. Yay! Sorry I didn't update you guys as much towards the end of the book. My camera died and it was charging, but I basically gobbled up like the last 150 pages because I don't know if it's just me, but like once you get through the tension of the romance and like you know who's gonna end up together, they're already happy, they're like in love. It's just like not, I don't care anymore. <laughs> like I don't care. I'm here to watch people fall in love, not watch people be in love. You know what I mean? And this will kind of tie into my rating, which I'll tell you in a second. I actually am disappointed in who she ended up with. I knew who she was gonna end up with from the beginning. I feel like it's just pretty obvious, like based on how the characters are introduced in this book, I knew which one she would be and she, she would like end up with. But I honestly feel like I didn't, we didn't focus any time on their romance uh, until like the end of the book. Like all of this was spent with other things. and it, and I honestly liked the beginning so much more. I feel like the first like 50% of the book, I was like, is this like a three or four star? Like, why am I actually really enjoying this? I really, really liked Jake. Um, I liked Tiernan's like growth and how she was like coping with her emotions. She's a very unique FMC. I like that she, like her parents had just died and she's going through this really traumatic thing, but because she was so neglected by them, she is like incapable of kind of feeling the sadness that everyone expects her to feel. And I just thought that the whole story about her parents and her childhood trauma and everything was really interesting. Uh, I feel like this book kind of deals with working through trauma through love, like, like how you search for what your parents never gave you in your romantic relationships. At least I think that's what Penelope Douglas was trying to do but it wasn't done well because honestly like again i just think that the guy that she ended up with they had no chemistry honestly if i had it my way i feel like i would love if penelope douglas wrote just a bunch of like smutty novellas that are less about a romance and more about just like a hookup like this one intimate moment because i feel like they write smut so well that i just wish i could just only read the smut sometimes <laughs> Like that's what I want to do with the Devil's Night series. I just want to read the smut. I don't even know if I want to read the entire plot. I don't think I mentioned it when I finished it, but she does end up with Caleb, who is who I expected her to end up with at the very beginning of the book. It's kind of like he's the one that doesn't talk to her and is super standoffish and is like, you know, you don't get much of him until literally like the past, the last 30% of the book. So 
I kind of expected that he would be the one that she ended up with, with. But honestly, I think my rating for this book goes down a star at least because I think maybe this is controversial. Let me know if you agree, if you, if you have read this. I think she should have ended up with Jake. And it's a shocker for me to sit here and say she should have ended up with her literal step uncle who was like, a solid 20 years older than her but I actually believed in their connection and I saw them like bond and I saw what they had in common I felt like we didn't get enough of seeing Caleb and Tiernan connect and maybe that is because he doesn't talk much but I have read other books with mute characters and there's still more chemistry and there's still more you can have communication without like verbally talking it's just like I don't know what Caleb and Tiernan have in common I don't know what they what they like about each other like I felt chemistry with her and Jake and yeah I just don't like who she ended up with and obviously I don't love the three-way scenes I'm normally love a threesome but if it's with two brothers biological brothers mm, not my fave but I honestly don't think this is as crazy and taboo and wild as everyone makes it out to be. You learn so much about the characters that it, by the end of it, it doesn't seem that wild. Just the spice was wild. So yeah, two and a half stars. That is my reading vlog for Credence by Penelope Douglas. Hey vlog, so long time no see. It has been, I think, a good like week and a half since I finished Credence, but I have officially started Haunting Adeline. I am like two or three chapters in. Chapter one, we meet Addie. She is moving into her grandparents' creepy old house and she has a lot of like fond memories of doing stuff there when she was a kid. Addie is a writer, she's an author. And so when she moves in, she starts feeling like she's kind of being watched. And then at a book signing, she spots Zaid watching her in the crowd. And then we got our first chapter of Zaid's point of view, where we see him torturing and killing this man named Josh as he tries to get information out of him. And we discover that John and whoever Zaid is trying to like take down is involved with child trafficking, which is awful. Um, so yeah, already like two chapters in, immediately super dark. We hit the darkness on the fucking head. I knew it was a stalker romance, but I didn't really expect Zaid to be like involved with that side of the crime world. But I mean, I'm all for people getting revenge on pedophiles. Like I love that murder a pedophile see if i care because i don't and then the only other note that i wanted to mention is we we get the first letter or like diary entry i guess in addie's grandma's perspective i don't know if it was in the same house but i guess addie's grandma also was getting stalked by a man and so we see the first letter of that but right away addie's grandma is like why am i kind of into it like she's like i know that this man is watching me and my husband would probably like try to murder him if he found out but like i'm afraid of what would happen to my stalker like she was more concerned about her stalker's well-being <laughs> which is very interesting so i'm i i'm just confused about that part i am excited to read more of her grandma's letters and kind of like see what happens but yeah otherwise it's going good i'm enjoying it it's definitely like perfect perfect october halloween vibes this vlog probably sorry my brakes are really squeaky we got new brakes like a month ago and they've just been really squeaky anyway it's a perfect read for october for spooky season and yeah i'm enjoying it i will let you know when i have more updates but i'm gonna go get my coffee Hey, hey, it's been a few days. I have a little bit of a reading update. I'm on page 114 and we're already just like, we're, we're right in the thick of it. Like it doesn't just like slowly ramp you up to the dark stuff. No, it chucks you right in the deep end. Basically the second that Zayn sees Addie at this book signing, he's just like, oh, I am obsessed with her. I need to have her. She's mine. 
I don't love the insta love i feel like that's where i'm gonna struggle with this i feel like i need a little bit more realism for me to like root for the couple like right now addy is very like who is this fucking stalker like calling the cops trying to get help so I'm, I'm i like that i like that she's like fighting against it at first i need it to be like a gradual shift but either way whatever so he's obsessed with her he sees her she goes out with this guy and they get together and stuff happens and he literally says before she leaves like if someone else touches you i will leave their hand on your doorstep tomorrow or whatever and she doesn't believe it and then it happens he literally kidnaps this guy that she hooks up with from the bar and he's currently torturing him so 100 pages in we've already had a full-on sex scene with another person not with zade but we had a full-on spicy scene and now we have a murder scene so just going right on into it right now i i do think i like addy as a character i think she's interesting zade i need to learn more about like i I, there needs to be a reasoning for why he's acting like this because you can't you can't just act like this i know it's a book but you can't come on like there needs to be a reason i do like that he's like you know trying to stop these like sex trafficking rings and stuff like that isn't inter but like as far as the romance goes i need to understand why he likes addy so much like her being beautiful isn't enough for me they've never spoken you know so now i'm on page 130 we just learned that Addie's grandma named Gigi, the same one that also fell in love with her stalker, was murdered. She had her throat slit and was killed and they never confirmed who did it. It like went unsolved, but Addie's kind of assuming it was probably her stalker. I have a feeling it was probably someone else. I don't know. However, I would honestly love if this duet ended with Zayd killing Addie. I don't know. That would be like a fucking plot twist, but I just don't think that's gonna happen i think there's way too many zayd shippers out there for that to be the case so i don't know but i think she's gonna try and maybe look into her grandma's murder and see if she can solve it I, i'm not sure i'm on page 200 and zayd and addy have just met for the first time they've had their first interaction together and um immediately he just talks about how he is gonna find her and punish her for calling the cops a bunch and you know because he told her in text don't call the cops don't call the cops and she keeps calling the cops uh and all the police reports are like apparently going missing and stuff i don't know but he shows up and he's like i'm gonna get revenge like i'm gonna punish you for calling the cops and pulls out his gun and if you just sit and think for a sec, I'm sure you can probably come up with what I think he's going to do with this gun. <laughs> and I... I'm intrigued. Okay. It happened. And you know what? Like, in theory, I'm not even going to lie. In theory, a scene like that could be fine. But it also involved non-con and dub con and that's just like ugh, i can't i can't do i can't do the non-consent like i the the way that consent is being handled is not my fave and also their characterizations i'm not even gonna lie zade and addy are so contradictory like zade for example on one hand is like his whole job and his whole purpose is like to stop women and children from being sex trafficked and he's like standing up for them and it's like sick. He like gets so sick thinking about what happens to these people. And so you're like, oh my gosh, he's a good guy. Like he's, he's, he's murdering people. Yeah, but he's murdering bad guys. But then he literally sexually assaults Addie. Like not even just sexually assaults, like full on R words her on page with an inanimate object like but then addy on one hand is like i'm so shy and awkward and like i i get nervous like asking a stranger for a, a question like i i'm non-confrontational you know i'm just an author and i she does all these like meet and greets and these book signings and she always gets so nervous around all these strangers you know she's just shy 
And then she always says stuff in her head like, some people might think that I'm fearless, but I'm. this is all so fucking stupid. No, babe. I honestly don't think anyone, anyone would see these actions and be like, you are a fearless queen. No, it's delusion. <laughs> it is delusion. But yeah, I don't know. It's just, here's the thing. I feel like I could overlook the, the like obviously you're going into a stalker romance and the trigger warnings like i knew there was going to be non-con you know I, I i can't really fault the book for having non-con when i knew going into it i was i was ha it was going to have non-con so but what i can fault it for is having characters that logically make no sense and their personalities are all over the place you know like we still don't really have any reason why zade likes addy other than he thinks she's beautiful that's it that's all we've got addy i can't tell what kind of person she like i could not describe her she has no characteristics other than writing books it just feels like hd carlton's just like self-inserting like because there's like at, there's no characteristics for addy i don't know anything about her so i don't know it's like i could root for a stalker romance if the stalker has an interesting character story. Zayd is definitely a more compelling character than Addy right now, especially with his whole like Z thing, his criminal enterprise. Like I'm more interested in Daya. Daya is like Addy's best friend. She's more interesting. She's like also involved in the Z stuff. I'm pretty sure she works with Zayd, but Daya at this point doesn't know that Zayd is Addy's stalker. But also Daya like saw that this man chopped off these random strangers hands got that guy and his entire family murdered and has been stalking her and then Daya just shows up and is like so how are things with lover boy lover boy <laughs> i don't like any of the characters i'm not like rooting for any of the characters i'm just like here okay it's time for an update. I am now on page 288, so I'm right around halfway. I really, really, really think that the dub con is gonna be the death of me for this book. I just, I can't get behind it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Obviously, I'm trying to suspend my disbelief to an extent because it is a stalker romance, you know what I mean? But I think the whole making Zayd this like supposed good guy, this like vigilante who's like, trying to get revenge on all of these other really bad men. Zayd obviously realizes and understands that sexual assault and rape and stuff like that is bad, no shit. But for some reason, it's only a problem when it's children and minors. But if he does it to Addy, it's okay. Like, I'm just like not understanding. It's like, he knows all of these guys that he's hunting are bad men because they assault women. And he's always talking about these poor women that get assaulted by these men. And obviously like a lot of these women are in full on traffic rings and it's a lot more intense, but how are you gonna sit there and then still act like what you're doing with Addy is okay? And he always says like, I'm a bad man, I'm a bad man, but like, so then what gives you the right to be the one to chase these other bad men? Like his character makes no fucking sense. I'm so sorry, just like his two colored eyes, he's got two personalities and they make no fucking sense. He makes no sense. Addy makes a little more sense because she's really grappling with how conflicted she is about Zayd. Like, she's like, I like this and I like him, but also I know it's wrong and he's forcing himself on me. Very fucking weird, but it's whatever. But she's kind of like rationalizing it in her head, one, through her grandma's diary entries, because she's like, my grandma loved her stalker, so maybe it's okay, but also my grandma might have been murdered by her stalker, so maybe it's bad. I'm gonna guess that her grandma Gigi's stalker is not the one that murdered her. It was some other person. I haven't had too much experience with other dark romances, but last year for Hogtober, I read the Mindfuck series, and I did a whole reading vlog. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. But honestly, I definitely prefer the Mindfuck series to the Haunting Adeline, like the Cat and Mouse duet so far. I just feel like the characters in the Mindfuck series, their motivations and their reasonings for what they did and how they, like what they believed and their morals, like even though they were dark and twisted and Lana's literally killing a bunch of men and there's a bunch of dark stuff that goes on too about sexual assault and stuff. Like it has just as dark and like heavy topics but I feel like the Mindfuck series, like plot wise and character wise was just way better. Like so much 
better in terms of execution and like plotting and it, and like right now the scene that I'm reading Addie goes out and she's drunk she's like tipsy she's had a couple drinks she comes home and she knows that Zade's stalking her and at this point she's like taunting him so she starts texting him and she's like are you gonna come visit me tonight like I'm gonna take my clothes off like she's just feeling a little fiery I don't know why she's doing that does anyone no. Does she even know why she's doing that? No. Does she even aware that she likes him or wants to be with him at this point? Still no, but for some reason she's in. I, look, again, there's no logic or reasoning behind anything that these characters do, really. But somehow a blowjob gets brought up. I don't know. I don't remember. I was doing my makeup, like listening to the audiobook, and I like was not paying attention to all the little details. But somehow a blowjob gets brought up, and Zayd says, like, no, I'm not going to let you suck my dick or like, I'm not going to, we're not going to do anything tonight because you are drunk and you will probably either like throw up on me, but also like you're drunk. You're not in your right mind. Tell me why then five pages later, he whips his dick out and starts jerking off on her face. Babe, she's still drunk. I don't know what changed in the past. Like, that's exactly my point. It's like his characterization and like his morals and his decisions flip flop every two seconds. It doesn't make sense. Like, so what changed your mind? Like what changed your mind in that span of time? I just don't understand. I feel like I've just been sitting here ranting for like 10 minutes and I don't even know how much of that I'm going to keep in. But basically, I don't like any of these characters. They make no fucking sense but I'm gonna keep reading. The great thing is it does go by really fast. Like the writing isn't amazing. It's definitely a little cringy and cheesy at times, but it's very, very fast paced. The chapters are short. So I'm like, you know, speeding through this book, which is nice. I'm not bored. Like it's entertaining to listen to, but as far as like the romance goes, I'm feeling no feeling. Hello everyone. I just hit page 308 and I thought I would give a little bit of a reading update. I am going to read you a page of this book, okay? And I feel like this page in and of itself kind of describes the entire feel of this entire book. So I'm just going to read it and then we can discuss. Are you going to murder him too? Of course I am. Slowly. Start with snipping the Achilles heel so we can't run and then that's fucked up. You're going to jail. She cuts in, disgust curling her lip. Actually, I hope you go to prison and are sentenced to death. She turns with a snarl, but she doesn't make it a step before my hand snaps out, capturing her arm and whipping her back around directly into my chest. Addie inhales sharply, her eyes dilating as I seize the back of her neck with one hand and grab her delectable ass with the other, lifting her up against my body. Will you be my last meal, baby? Her mouth parts and her breathing hitches. Those light brown eyes are wild and swollen with emotion, shock, awe, desire. I lean in close, my mouth hovering a mere inch from hers. You taste like heaven. I could feast on that sweet little pussy for hours and still die a starving man. It'll be the closest I will ever get to God before they inject me with that needle. Don't you agree? She's speechless, so I take advantage and capture those sweet lips with my own. She tenses beneath the hold but doesn't pull away. The taste of fruit from her margarita blooms on my tongue and I can't help but groan. You taste like fucking Nirvana. So... If your reaction to that is like, okay, I'm kind of into it, read this book. If your reaction to that is, what the fuck? It's probably not for you. And that I'm, 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 I'm honestly leaning more towards the what the fuck. You taste like fucking Nirvana is a Wattpad ass sentence. If I've ever heard one in my life, that is so iconic. This is gonna be super niche, but I know one person's gonna understand where I'm coming from. If you back in the day were on like 2013, 2014 Wattpad and you were obsessed with reading those One Direction fan fictions where like your mother sells you to be One Direction's personal slave. If you were reading those and you were like obsessed with those, I feel like that is the target audience. Those girlies would eat this up. I'm just saying. I'm here to help you out. Plot wise, it's honestly pretty boring. Nothing is really happening. Addie is just kind of like living in this house. I, is she supposed to be writing a book? I don't even know. She's, she's part-time trying to solve her grandma's murder and that's basically all that she's doing. And then Zaid is for his, in his like Z work company right now, they're tracking down these four senators and they're involved with like child 
demon slave rituals like literally like drinking children's blood and shit which is wild so he's like tracking down these senators and he's found this one and he's like following him and that's basically like the plot but really like nothing has happened for the past like 100 pages like nothing's really changed so okay hey it is the next day and i ended up going to bed last night and i sat and i read a lot more as you can see i stopped Having. I'm pushing through. I'm pushing through because I want to finish the book and see because I've heard that it ends on a pretty crazy plot twist. So I want to see if I like at least am interested enough to read the second part or not. I don't know, but I'm on page 538. We just discovered that it was neither Gigi's husband or Gigi's stalker that murdered her. It was actually Gigi's husband's like friend that was secretly in love with her named Frank, who's like kind of a side character throughout the story. And then you find that out. So I just found that out on page 530. The smut is just not smutting for me. So I'm kind of, honest, I'm honestly skimming. I'm not even gonna lie, I'm, I'm, I'm skimming. Look, I can understand why some people want like a really dark, just like, this is just like a dark, sexy little fantasy. Like it is not quality literature. It is not amazing. It is not otherworldly. It is not like, this insane story and that's fine and i think there is definitely a place for just a spicy little silly smutty romance and if you like non-con if you like stalker romance like this will be your shit uh but just for me i've read so many other dark romances that deal with dark topics and very kinky spicy scenes but they handle them in a much much better way and i just think the writing for this series is like nothing special you know like there's just nothing amazing about it it's like i either don't like it or it's average so sorry if you really were hoping i was gonna love this but i do have recommendations if you're looking for good spicy books similar to this that i actually enjoyed so stay tuned to the end of the video because i'm gonna tell you what i think you should read instead of this but for now i've got about 50 pages so i'm gonna push through and finish page 555 we're getting another Perfect quote from our leading man, Zaid, here. I could have tried to fuck her since she's asleep, but I decide to hold off on that until Addie admits her love for me and freely accepts mine. Thanks, King. You know, as if that's not the bare fucking minimum. Although I've taken advantage of Addie on several occasions, at least her being awake and coherent allowed me to watch her body's reaction. Doesn't make it right, but her body has always wept for me. Yeah, Zaid a lot of, throughout this book, Zaid uses the fact that Addie gets visibly, you know, wet down there, that her body has the reactions of arousal during this these times when he's essentially forcing himself on her. He uses that to like justify it in his head, but I just want to let everyone know that like that is not okay. I, I feel like that is a, that is a sentiment that is so not Okay, do you know how many people have been sexually assaulted and had their body react in a normal, natural way that your body is created to react and they feel shame or guilt as if they enjoyed it? Like, that's just not how it works by a lot. It's just like, it pisses me off. I just, ugh, like, the like acrobats that the reader has to do to like feel empathy or like Zade or understand Zade. Like, I am not doing mental gymnastics for this man. I just won't do it. I won't. I finished. And I knew it, I knew, I knew that this book was going to end with Addie getting kidnapped. We basically see the end of Zade's little mission where he manages to stop this sacrifice from happening. But then the last chapter in his perspective, his friend comes in and is like, I tried to warn you Zade, I tried to warn you. And Zade's like, what's going on? And then all of a sudden there's a gun put to his head and you don't know who put the gun to his head. And then the next chapter is the last chapter from Addie's perspective, and we see her get kidnapped by Max and Rio. And I'm pretty sure she is going to be sold into the sex trafficking ring. Yeah, because he says like, you'll be worth a pretty penny once you're healed and stuff. So yeah, I'm pretty sure book two is just gonna follow Addie through that and probably Zayd trying to now rescue Addie. Again, it's like, I see why people enjoyed this. So I'm not trying to like yuck anyone's yum. It just didn't work for me. I think that the way 
that these dark themes were handled. A lot of it was just there for shock value and not for the actual story. And it's like, I, I'm okay with a romance being dark. I love a dark romance. I'm down with the concept of a stalker romance, but you still need to write a good story that's believable and that has me understanding the characters. I love reading from the perspective of villains and Zayd is definitely an anti-hero. He's definitely a villain type for sure, but I just don't think that H.G. Carlton wrote him as a very believable villain. I'm going to be honest. I thought Credence was much better in terms of writing and executing a romance. This was not romantic to me at all. And we don't even really get to a point where like Addie is fully like accepts Zayd as her partner or as her relationship in this. And it is a duology. So I guess maybe that's technically saved for book two. I don't know how HEAs work with romance duologies, but like by the end of this book, she still is like, oh, Zayd, still calling Zayd like her stalker, still like making comments about how he's a fucking creep. And it's just like, I get the whole like back and forth. Like I like to run and you like to chase like vibe, but I just feel like it gets to a point where just after 12 sex scenes, like you can't admit that you like him. I don't know. Definitely, definitely was not for me. And I don't think I will be reading the second book given how traumatic and graphic people say it is. People say that like, if you think this book is dark, read the second book. And now it makes sense knowing what happens to Addie. And I'm pretty sure like half of the next book or something is literally just Addie being sex trafficked. And so, so, so it's like, do I want to put myself that, through that? Do I want to put myself through that just for Zayd to like magically save her and like do it in the most convenient way possible? No, I don't know. I, I gotta say out of all the dark romances I've read, which isn't that many, but out of them, this is probably like one of my least favorites. I just think there are way better dark romances out there, but that's gonna be it. I am going to go collect my thoughts and I will catch up with you guys later to end the video. Oh my gosh, I just went to add this to my Goodreads and mark it as read. And this is actually my 100th book that I've read this year. So I've officially completed my Goodreads goal and we're a whole like two months early. So yay, sad that my last read of the challenge was not the best, but I'm, I'm happy. 100 books read this year. Love that for me. Josh is making us dinner. He's making grilled cheese, so don't mind him in the background. But I am here to give you my final rating and review of Haunting Adeline and close out today's reading vlog. So yes, I finished Haunting Adeline as you saw. I've been sitting with it for the past few hours and honestly, the way I rate books on Goodreads is based on my enjoyment while reading the books. And so if I rate it based on that criteria, I'm going to give it a one star. I feel like if I want to read a book that's super dark and gritty or super kinky and deals with some very intense sexual scenes, I will go to a Harley LaRue book. Dare, Losers, Her Soul to Take is about demons. But Harley LaRue always handles consent so well, and I think it's just done brilliantly so if you liked this series if you didn't like this series whichever either way i recommend checking out harley larue's books if you like darker romances this this one just it wasn't for me my ultimate thing isn't even how dark it was you know it's funny because i'm giving this a one star not because there's sex trafficking not because zade is a stalker you know not because of the abysmal dirty talk no None of those things. I'm giving it one star because I could not relate, understand, or care about either character. Shocker to think that I actually preferred the cousin fuckers over the stalkers, but you never know. Weirder things have happened. I just feel like Penelope Douglas writes and crafts interesting characters with interesting backstories and you actually i actually understood tiernan and i understood her reasoning i preferred credence neither of them were my favorites but i nonetheless had a fun time reading and making this vlog for you guys so i hope you enjoyed it thank you so much for watching let me know what books you want me to read in my next reading vlog and i will talk to you later bye